ultrasound guided regional anesthesia and palliative care. Uh, over to you, ma'am. So our topic today uh, is blood and blood products. This is very relevant topic from exam point of view. Um, we all use blood and blood products uh, daily in day-to-day -day practice in uh, OT and ICUs. So without uh, further ado, uh, let's start today's lecture. In old times, the uh, whole blood was only option for transfusion whenever any a uh, component has to be replaced or uh, blood has to be given and it caused unnecessary administration of unwanted cells or plasma constitutes. Uh, now techniques are available for separation of blood and now the whole blood rarely is rarely used um, and one unit of donor's blood can be utilized for preparation of different components and can benefit more than one patient. Uh, transfusing only the portion of uh, uh, blood needed by the patient is called the component therapy. It allows optimal use of limited community resource. As you all know, blood is a scarce resource and uh, we have to optimally use it. And secondly, this component therapy, it also keeps the risk of transfusion to minimum. So one unit of donor blood collected in a suitable anticoagulant preservative solution and which contain blood cells and plasma is whole blood. While a constituent separated from whole blood by differential centrifugation of one donor unit or by effervescence is blood components. Various components are there. And a blood derivative is a product obtained from multiple donor units of plasma by fractionation. So this is a schematic diagram that show how the whole blood is separated. So the whole blood with satellite bags at attached is centrifuged at a light spin. Light spin is for shorter duration and with low RPM. So uh, after the centrifugation, platelet-rich plasma is expressed of the red cells into the satellite bag. Then the additive solution that has anticoagulant, glucose, etc. is added to the red blood cells. Then this red blood cells are sealed and cut off. Then the remaining platelet-rich plasma is centrifuged again, from, where, from which plasma is expressed off. Then this platelet are sealed and uh, tubing is cut. Then the plasma is either frozen to make fresh frozen plasma or frozen and thought to make cryoprecipitate, antihemophilic factor. So this is how uh, the whole blood after light, either light or heavy spin, it uh, expresses platelet-rich plasma or uh, platelet-poor plasma and buffy coat, which is after platelet-rich plasma uh, is frozen and rapidly frozen and stored as fresh frozen plasma. So these are the various blood components that we will be uh, looking and seeing in this presentation. So the preservatives uh, uh, is added to the whole blood to increase the uh, shelf life. Various preservatives are CPD, CP2D, CPDA, which contains citrate, phosphate, uh, dextrose, and adenine. So glucose, it uh, supports ATP generation by glycolytic pathway, adenine for, to synthesize ATP, Citrate prevents coagulation by chelating calcium. This is a very important point because after massive transfusion, uh, it can uh, decrease the calcium level and it can <coughs> cause bleeding also. And sodium diphosphate, it prevents fall in pH. So the CPD and CP2D increases the shelf life of blood by 21 days, while addition of adenine increases the shelf life to 35 days. And this shelf life can be extended to 42 days with addition of additive solution SAGM to red cells within 72 hours of collection. In that uh, consists of saline, adenine, glucose and mannitol. 
So, uh, right, let's uh, start with the whole blood. Uh, as the name suggests, the, it is uh, the whole blood, the whole blood with all the components and blood. So, the bag usually contains 450 ml of blood and 63 ml of anticoagulant solution. Uh, it raises hemoglobin by around 1 gram uh, per deciliter and hematocrit by 3%. In this, no components have been removed and it consists of RBCs, WBCs, platelets, plasma with anticoagulants. It is stored at 1 to 6 degrees centigrade and uh, it is administered through standard blood filter that is 150 to 280 micron size and it should be infused within 4 hours of issue. <clears throat> so, whole blood is rarely used nowadays. Um, it, uh, it is used in military setup and front for, for frontline workers and uh, uh, usually it is given when there is active bleeding and already blood loss has happened with hypovolemia more than 25% of blood volume and for uh, exchange transfusion that, uh, that too only fresh blood is used in severe anemia and birth, severe hyperbilirubinemia, also in cardiovascular bypass surgery. So there are various risks uh, involved with this whole blood transfusion. Um, uh, risk of volume overload is there, especially in cases of chronic anemia, cardiac failure. So it has to be avoided. So uh, 20 ml per kg of blood transfusion increase HP by 1 gram per deciliter. The rate should be 3 ml per kg per hour. There are some consideration of transfusion. It, it, the blood should be ABO compatible cross-match compatible and the transfusion should be started slowly to see and monitor the any reactions or uh, any side effects. So various uh, reactions can happen with this whole blood, anaphylactic, allergic, febrile, hemolytic reaction. Uh, whole blood uh, can be a source of infection because it is not sterile and uh, it uh, can lead to sepsis obviously circulatory overload uh, in chronic anemia and in cardiac uh, uh, patients. It can lead to transfusion related acute lung injury. So fresh blood is the blood that is of less than five days and it is a source of coagulation factors platelets WBC. It is used for exchange transfusion. Various other uh, blood products that we are going to discuss is red cell concentrate. That is the most commonly used uh, uh, blood product uh, in uh, during operations and ICUs. It is also called packed red cells in which platelets and plasma have been removed. To, uh, one unit contains 200 to 250 ml of volume and its hematocrit is 65 to 75%. Shelf life is 35 days and it is stored as 2 to 4 degrees centigrade. So, main red cell is the source of, it is oxygen uh, carrying, may, uh, mainly it is given because of its oxygen carrying capacity and uh, it increases the hemoglobin concentration. So, it is used in anemia, thalassemia, sickle cell disease. So it is mainly given because of their hemoglobin content and increase the mass of circulating red blood cells. The various types that are uh, uh, available are leukoreduced red cell concentrate, irradiated and saline washed. So, leukoreduced uh, red blood cell concentrate is prepared by removing a proportion of plasma from leukocyte depleted whole blood. So, leukocyte reduced, uh, leukoreduced RBC contains less than 5 into 10 raised to the power 6 WBC, while non leukoreduced RBC contain 1 to 3 into 10 raised to the power 9 WBC. By leuco redu reduction, uh, we prevent these antibodies that are against WBC antigen and chances of febrile reaction can be reduced. So hence it's mainly used in chronically transfused patients to prevent the antibody production towards WBC antigen. Also in potential and transplant recipients, 
patient with previous febrile non-hemolytic transfusion reaction and CMD seronegative at rest patients for whom seronegative components are not available. So next is irradiated RBCs. The RBC units are exposed to gamma irradiation of 2500 centigrade to damage the donor WBC DNA and prevent the cellular immune proliferation response to the recipient's tissue. Its main indication are units from blood relatives, blood, blood relatives highly immune, immunosuppressed patient at risk of graft versus host disease, cellular immune deficiency in solid organ transplant, stem cell marrow transplant and intrauterine transfusion. Next comes the platelet concentrate. There are two types. One is random donor pooled platelets and single donor apheresis platelet. In uh, random donor pooled platelets, a single unit of platelet can be isolated from every unit of donated blood by centrifugation. As the platelet number is inadequate, four to six units are pooled together. And it is prepared by either platelet rich plasma or buffy coat removal. In case of single donor apheresis platelets, the platelets in some white blood cells are removed and red blood cells and plasma are returned to the donor. A typical apheresis platelet unit provides equivalent of six or more unit of uh, random uh, platelets from the whole blood. It usually contains three to six multiplied by 10 raised to the power 11 platelets. The platelet concentrate unit usually consists of 70 to 90 milliliter shell with shelf life of five days and it should be stored at core temperature of 22 plus minus 2 degrees centigrade with continuous gentle agitation. Uh, its indications are uh, uh, multiple like when platelet count is very low less than 10,000 per microliter uh, or it is usually given to prevent spontaneous hemorrhage and some physician also wait till uh, count of less than 5,000 per microliter. When it is less than 50,000, it is usually um, given if there is an active bleeding or patient is scheduled to undergo an invasive procedure or have a qualitative intrinsic platelet disorder. When it is less than 1 lakh, it is uh, 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 given in CNS injury, multi-system trauma and if patient is undergoing neurosurgery and platelet count is less than 1 lakh, then it is uh, transfused. And for various other like uh, when uh, catheter, intracathetical catheter need to be placed for anesthesia or um, uh, central for central venous cannulation and um, when platelet count is normal, uh, on, it, it is given with ongoing active bleeding uh, along with the uh, red cell concentrate. Uh, it, uh, it, has, it has shown no benefit in heparin induced thrombocytopenia or thrombotic thrombocytopenic purpura. In fact, this uh, thrombotic thrombocytopenic purpura is a contraindication for platelet transfusion. It can increase the thrombosis. It, is also, it has also shown no benefit in hemolytic uremic syndrome and even in disseminated intravascular coagulation. Oh, it is only transfused when platelet count is less than 10,000. So one random unit of platelet uh, raises one random unit of platelet raises the platelet count by five thousand to eight thousand per cubic millimeter, and one unit single donor epheresis platelet raises platelet count by approximately thirty thousand per cubic millimeter. And uh, this expected increase will be less in sepsis, splenomegaly, and platelet odor alloantibodies or if patient is receiving chemotherapy. And once issued, uh, this platelet should be transfused as soon as possible. Now we come to fresh frozen plasma. Uh, fresh frozen plasma is separated from freshly drawn blood by removing the uh, red blood cells, white blood cells and platelets and is frozen within eight hours of Donation. It is stored at minus 18 to minus 30 degrees centigrade with shelf life of one year. Uh, the one unit uh, has volume of 200 to 250 milliliter 
and its dose is 12 to 15 milliliter per kg. <clears throat> So it contains, as the uh, name suggests, it, it is plasma, it contains all coagulation factors and plasma proteins. So uh, it is very rich in fibrinogen, two, uh, it contains 250 to 300 milligram per gram, factor rate around 0.6 international unit per ml and factor 9, uh, usually 0.9 international unit per ml and it has various uh, uh, proteins like albumin and globulin. So FFP uh, needs to be ABO compatible as it has plasma and antibodies, but does not require cross matching or RH typing. So fresh frozen plasma becomes thawed plasma if it is not transfused within 24 hours of being thawed. It can be transferred up to five days after being thawed if stored at refrigerator temperature that is one to six degrees centigrade. So fresh frozen plasma is indicated wherever these clotting factors are deficient. It contains all the clotting factors, fibrinogen. So obviously whenever these uh, uh, clotting factors are deficient, uh, we transfuse this fresh frozen plasma. So it can be single clotting factor deficiency or multiple clotting factor deficiency as disseminated intravascular coagulation. It is also transfused uh, along uh, red blood cell concentrate in, during massive transfusions. And uh, for uh, warfarin overdose, it is also used in hemorrhagic disease of neonate and thrombotic thrombocytopenic purpura. So fresh frozen plasma, when thawed at 4 degrees centigrade, under heavy spin, uh, it we get cryoprecipitate and cryoremove plasma. Cryoprecipitate is refrozen within one hour and stored at less than uh, uh, minus 18 degrees centigrade. And cryo remove plasma, it freeze at 80 degrees centigrade immediately and then stored at less than minus 18 degrees centigrade. So cryo precipitated anti hemophilic factor or cryo is a precipitated protein portion that results when fresh frozen plasma is thawed at 4 degrees centigrade. It is rich in factor 8, factor 13 one willy blend factor and fibrinogen. It contains around 80 to 150 units of factor 8 per bag and 150 to 250 milligram uh, fibrinogen per bag. Usually uh, volume is 15 ml. It is stored at minus 30 degrees centigrade and its shelf life is two years. And thought cryoprecipitate shelf life is six hours. It has to be infused within six hours. So its indications are as it contains uh, factor 13 and fibrinogen, so it can be used in congenital or required fibrinogen deficiency, factor 13 deficiency, von Willebrand disease, hemophilia A, factor 8 deficiency, and also for fibrin glue that is applied to surgical site. So cryopoor plasma or cryosupernar tent is a byproduct of cryoprecipitate preparation. It lacks lebide clotting factor like 5, 8, and fibrinogen, but it contains an inadequate amount of stable clotting factor like 2, 7, 9, and 10. It is frozen and stored at minus 20 degrees centigrade or lower temperature. It can be stored for 5 years. So its indications are in deficiency of a stable clotting factor like 2, 7, 9, 10 coagulopathies due to warfarin drugs and in bulk. Now we come to granulocyte concentrate. Granulocytes are WBCs uh, and other cells. It is collected by apheresis technology after granulocytes are stimulated by dexamethasone and granulocyte colony stimulating factor. So uh, without pretreatment, it has uh, 1 into 10 raised to the power 10 granulocyte, but after uh, pretreatment with dexamethasone and this uh, GCSF, it contains 4 to 8 into 10 raised to the power 10 granules. It is stored at 24 degrees centigrade and it, has, it should be infused within 24 hours of collection. So main indication are neutropenia from chemotherapy or transplantation, aplastic anemia, in neonatal sepsis and chronic granulomatous disease. 
Now we come to prothrombin complex concentrate. It is derived from cold plasma. It contains factor. It has a uh, three or four factor. Uh, uh, that is, it contains uh, two, nine, and ten mainly, and uh, also sometimes plus minus also contains seven factor seven. So it is used for emergency reversal of warfarin therapy. Uh, it is formed by further processing plasma, so it's it has some advantages over FFP. One dose is equivalent to eight to sixteen FFP. So obviously, with less volume, we can achieve the our target, and it is quick to infuse, and no thawing is needed. It is leukocyte free and so minimal risk. Its dose is twenty five to fifty unit per kg. There are some plasma derivatives uh, that is used in particular single factor deficiencies like factor 8 which is used in hemophilia factor 8 deficiency its loading dose is desired level minus patient's level multiplied by body weight and kg divided by 2 then factor 9 its indication is hemophilia b factor 9 deficiency factor 8 von willi von willi brand factor concentrate is used in type 2 b and severe type 3 von willi brand disease in mild disease, fresh frozen plasma is used. In moderate, cryoprecipitate can be used. Now we come to albumin. Albumin is a plasma protein. It increases the viscosity and it has various other functions. It comes in two preparation. One is human albumin solution, 4.5 or 5 percent in 250 ml or 500 ml bottle. And another is 20 to 25 percent. That is salt poor albumin. It comes in 20, 50, and 100 ml bottle. Its indication is where uh, uh, albumin is low in nephrotic syndrome, in liver disease with fluid overload. It is mainly used as plasma expander. So next is immunoglobulin. Normal immunoglobulin. It is prepared from normal plasma and indicated in hypogammaglobulinemia in various infections and immune thrombocytopenic purpura. And we have then specific immunoglobulins which is prepared from donor with high titer of antibodies, example anti B, anti hepatitis B, anti varicella zoster immunoglobulin. So concept of component therapy is important to reduce wastage of blood and secondly reduce the complication due to whole blood. Thank you. Thank you, ma'am. Uh, how nicely, ma'am, you've explained every component, the way it is prepared, the way it is administered, the indications, the doses. So at a postgraduate level, uh, this is least which is expected of us. Uh, how do we prepare them? How do we store them? And what is going to happen to them at the room temperature to the maximum, how much we can keep at the room temperature. And being anesthesiologist, we have to be well-versed on how to transfuse them in what dosage and at what rate, especially uh, paying attention on the, the, the temperature of that, uh, the, the component that we are uh, administering, especially when we are following the massive transfusion protocol and we have to give multiple components. So as uh, I already uh, talked about the importance of giving warm uh, products, even the blood products. So what uh, in uh, I have seen to our postgraduates also, you know, taking the warm buckets of water and putting the blood in them or PRVCs in them. So that's a very wrong practice. So how we need to inculcate the use of uh, blood warmer device, blood warming devices in particular, because giving cold blood and all, it can activate the whole diamond, you know, hypothermia leading to acidosis, leading to coagulopathies, and of course, hypocalcemia. So paying attention to how to transfuse is really, really important at this level. Uh, thank you, ma'am. Thank you so much, ma'am. Yeah, you uh, uh, pointed out very correctly about the uh, transfusion mm -hmm. practices. So I can see one question that why whole blood uh, uh, is given during resuscitation and not the uh, component. 
wavelength therapy, not the filtered products. So it's like whenever possible, we uh, give component therapy, but uh, have the resources to give the component therapy. Uh, we can give whole blood. So studies have shown if it is not superior, then uh, it is equivalent to component therapy during resuscitation and uh, trauma and uh, massive transfusion. So whole blood can be given, but uh, yeah, of course, in these hospital setup, uh, it is rarely used nowadays. So we we use component therapy only, but uh, in uh, uh, such uh, remote areas and uh, you know military practices, we can use uh, during resuscitation. Definitely, ma'am, and because the emphasis is on restrictive transfusion these days, restrictive uh, goal-directed therapy as far as fluids is also concerned, that is why also the components, they are very well preferred. But yes, whole blood in the centers where it is not usually available, the components, they are not readily available except PRBCs and platelets. So there is as such, uh, uh, they can be used, not a proper contraindication for their use then. Yes, ma'am. Thank you so much, ma'am. Um, um, can you unmute yourself? Dr. Samiksha, yeah. Yes, yes, yes. Okay. Yeah. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you so much for your time and valuable contribution to APEC 23. Thank you to both the speakers for their excellent presentation. Um, so we Thank move you, on to our next. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you so much. So... We'll have the first quiz for the day. Yeah. So the first question, here it goes. Surgical anesthesia requires surgical sensory block till. Option A is T10 dermatomal level. Option B is T8. Option C is T6. And option D is T4. So what is the adequate dermatomal level for surgical anesthesia? This is in context to the LSCS. Okay, I think the question is little uh, inadequate. So surgical anesthesia required for conducting an LSCS. What is the sensory level block that you require, the level of the sensory block? Going to the question number two, all of the following are suitable for aspiration prophylaxis prior to cesarean section, except option A, ranitidine and metoclopramide, option B, clear fluids two hours prior to surgery, Option D, option C, glycopyrrolate, and option D, sodium citrate. So don't forget, accept, okay? So it is not suitable. So let's quickly move on. We won't be having a tea break since we're already running uh, late. So we will move to our next session, which is a long case presentation of a pregnant patient with a hemoglobin of 6 gram percent posted for MSLC LSES. And it's my honor to invite Dr. Dr. Rashmi Ramachandran as the external faculty for this case discussion. Hi, good morning. Good morning, ma'am. Ma'am is professor at the Department of Anesthesia, Pain Medicine and Critical Care at All India Institute of Medical Sciences, New Delhi. And ma'am's area of interest are urology, surgery, renal transplant surgery, simulation-based teaching and training, and airway management. We welcome you, ma'am. Thank you. The moderator for this session is Dr. Neha Gupta. Ma'am is Associate Professor at ABBIMS and Dr. RML Hospital. And her areas of special interest are pediatric anesthesia, BLS and ACLS training, and AV management. Welcome, ma'am. Morning. Morning, ma'am. Morning, Neha. The case will be...